So fascinating. Yeah, uh, yeah and I, I wonder, because I've, even in my notes here, I've got crystals and a smiley face, right, uh, in my notes here. Yeah. And, and I just want to tell you a brief story, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, sure. because um, uh, a good mate of mine uh, has a good mate. So somebody I work with, Matt, um, mm. his good friend works in a crystal shop in Mullumbimby. Now, I don't know mm. if you've been to this part of the world, Byron Bay and Mullumbimby and that, mm. but I think Mullumbimby is, is woo-woo in Australia. I think you could live anywhere. Mm. And, and they have what's called the crystal chair. Okay. Now, the, the, guy, the guy that opened the shop said he built the chair first because he always had crystals. And he said, the chair told me to, to then open a shop to put the chair in. So then he could then uh, let people freely come in. And there's this whole yeah. story behind it. So I go in and sit in this chair and there's all these crystals at different meridian points and different energy centers and oh. all the rest of it. And I sat in this chair, David, and I know nothing about crystals, right? And after about 10 minutes, oh my God, my whole body was just vibrating. But part of my face just kind of fully relaxed. It was like one wow. side of my face just completely let go. And I got off that thing wow. just going, what the hell was that? You know, and um, and I remember I went home, I had to have a sleep for about an hour. And then I got up and I was just like, my God, I feel amazing. So wow. I've always been curious. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so <laughs> from your perspective, why is that in the book? And what have you learned? around that over the years because right. I never thought I'd be talking about crystals you well, know neither did I actually you know I, I never imagined that in a book where I, I was trying to you know one of my, my main goals in the book was be really credible and make sure that the science is absolutely solid and, and I thought you know a lot of people lots of people are saying oh could you do a chapter on crystals and I'm going well I don't really know of any research but then I uncovered an astonishing amount of how they work. Uh, not medical studies on them, because that, those haven't been done, but a heck of a lot of research on how they work. I mean, for example, I mean, I, I've got one here just as, as a, in case, because I had a feeling that you might ask me something on it. So that, that's, a, a clear, that's a citrine crystal, but it, it's a bit like quartz in the sense that it's really, really right. clear. Now, there's three distinct ways that, that crystals work. Uh, the first way is quartz crystal has a physical property called diamagnetism. Now, what diamagnetism means is, imagine if it's pouring down with rain and the rain's coming down like straight. If I want to protect myself, I put an umbrella up. And what the umbrella will do is it'll deflect the path of the rain so that the rain then bends around me. Now, if some unfortunate soul was standing beside me, they'd get twice as much rain because the rain's going to bounce it off my umbrella and dump it on them. So a diamagnetic substance does something very similar, but it's not the rain that's bending, it's the Earth's magnetic field. So what that means is the Earth's magnetic field is bent around it and anything to the side is going to get a little bit more of it. So like a, a crystal, for example, the Earth's magnetic field's coming down and it bends around it. And so anything here gets a wee bit more of the Earth's magnetic field. So in one in, in one part, of, there's three parts to the crystal chapter. In one part, I explored research that shows that increasing or decreasing the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field accelerates or decelerates the growth rate of plants and even the amount of chlorophyll and iron uptake in plants. And there's, that, there's research in that. It's called plant magnetoreception. And there's a lot of interest in the, the science of it because scientists now, because we're more serious about space exploration than ever before, it's what are the consequences of transporting seeds, for example, or plants in a spacecraft that isn't subject to the Earth's magnetic field? Will they still grow in the absence of the Earth's magnetic field? Will, even if we can find some nice soil on Mars, what will be the consequence when Mars's magnetic field is significantly different from the Earth's? So there's a lot of research on just tweaking, increasing, decreasing Earth's magnetic field, and it makes a huge difference to the growth rate, even biomass accumulation in a plant, huge growth. So, so my first approach in the chapter wow. was to demonstrate that a, a diamagnetic substance by fiddling around with the Earth's magnetic field intensity can have an effect. There's no, no, research, there's no research into it. I did a few experiments myself, but there's no formal research into it. But I just pointed out that it can have, and then if we, we can't just dismiss the, the sitting on crystal bed, crystal chairs. We can't just dismiss it because, in fact, pseudoscience is dismissing something based on a belief 
without investigating the evidence yourself, not the stuff being dismissed as pseudoscience, but pseudoscience itself is dismissing something based on a belief without taking the time to investigate it yourself. And so I thought I'm taking the time here and I think there is something, there is something in the, the physical property of crystals that fiddles around with the S magnetic field. Perhaps it, lots of crystals together at one point, different types might generate quite a, an interesting tweak to the intensity of the S magnetic field so that we can actually feel it you know, differently. Because there is res there's research at Caltech in America where they actually put people in an electromagnetic shielded room. They replicated the S magnetic field and then they rotated it. And they just rotated it, the S magnetic field. So the lines, instead of going that way, they were going up the way. But nobody you can't see it. So they rotated the field inside this electromagnetic shielded cage. Do you know, every single person's brainwaves abruptly changed. They couldn't feel anything, but their brainwaves abruptly changed. In other words, the brain was absolutely in sync with the local, uh, the, the local Earth magnetic field, not just the intensity of it, but whether it was pointed in that direction or that direction. So there's a fascinating research wow. that shows we are absolutely sensitive to the Earth's magnetic field because we've, we've, bio, biology has evolved within the natural tone, if you will, of the Earth's magnetic field. So, so I approach crystals in that way, but also in another way, like the clarity of a crystal. In, in a, a Buddhist tradition called Dzogchen, uh, the clarity of a crystal is used as what's called the mental representation where the clarity represents mentally the state of clarity that one wishes to attain through the meditation and the spiritual practice. Now, in cognitive psychology, any if, a, if you have a mental representation of some way, then it helps you move towards something. So that's another link I made with crystals. Because of what they mean to us, because of what that represents, the, the clarity, even it comes from the earth itself, it's a, a mental representation. And so because I have something, a representation to focus my attention on, it makes it easier to get clearer in state if you hold or see a crystal because its clarity points you towards that state I would like to attain. So there's a, so I, I covered a section on, on mental representations and how and why they actually work. And then the last section on crystals was color psychology. Like in terms of using crystals to uh, in jewelry and stuff like that, and even just having them visible, uh, the, the science of color psychology shows, and marketers use it all over the world, you know, to sell products. You know, for example, a shop window with red in it encourages impulse buying. If you put light to blue lighting, it creates a calming effect and stuff. So I, I cited a lot of research in color psychology and say, saying that crystals of a certain color because of what the color represents, can actually cause behavioral change in people and even neurological change. In fact, one study I cited, volunteers were given a cherry flavored drink, you know, a cherry flavored drink, but the scientists put a green dye in it. So even though it was cherry flavored, it was colored bright green. You know, 37% of people couldn't taste cherry and they swore that the flavor was lemon or lime. In other words, the brain processed the taste based on the color more than what it actually was itself. In other words, the color yeah. itself was changing the activity of the brain in flavor processing regions. And, and so I pointed out that crystals may have an effect on that basis as well because of their color and what the color represents to us in, in the psyche. Wow, that's amazing. I did not expect you to say that. Like, that's phenomenal. Yeah. I didn't expect to uncover all that kind of research. When I, when I started diving into it, I, I wasn't going to put a chapter in crystals, but then the more logical stuff like that I found, I thought, isn't that absolutely compelling? Mm. That's really, really fascinating. And it just seemed to fit in with the context of the book. And because it answered a question that many people, when I was writing this, had asked me, when people knew I was writing it, loads of people. It's probably the most <clears throat> popular uh, request for what could you cover in the book? And I thought, isn't this interesting chapter in crystals? And I kept saying, well, you know, I, I, I don't know of any research. And it was only when I just started out of curiosity. I didn't Google science of crystals, but I, I knew a little bit about some things, you know, because I'm, I'm doing a, I'm towards the end of a degree in mathematics and physics. 
I knew about diamagnetism and paramagnetism, which is a instead of an umbrella, it's a funnel. <clears throat> but so I knew about what that is, and I knew about physical proper. I knew about substances which have diamagnetic or paramagnetic activity. So I knew about that. So I started out there, out, just out of curiosity. Got it. Really.